take you away from the markets for a minute because we're going to talk a little bit about shopping. This is very important. A banner holiday shopping season for retailers. According to MasterCard Spending Pulse, retail sales grew nearly 8% compared to this time last year. The biggest winners, e-commerce and furniture retailers. Yeah, that's what I just said. With more, let's bring in MasterCard Advisors Market Insight Senior Vice President Sarah Quinlan. Furniture. Absolutely. Talk to me about that one. Well, you know the most amazing thing? We've actually seen this for six months now, and it really reflects the confidence the consumer has in her circumstances. And she's saying, you know, a year ago we saw furnishings, the throw pillow. Now we're actually buying the sofa. So this is the key thing. I can make that larger, durable, good purchase, pay it off over a couple of months. I have confidence. The, the Anthony, she just used the word she. You heard that, right? Yeah. This is important. Well, I'm just wondering why they haven't sent, like, toys and items to my kids for their MasterCard use. I need to talk to you guys about that. <laughs> I'm sure that they've contributed these numbers. But my, my question is more related to uh, bigger purchases mean more confidence. Mm -hmm. Does that also mean more consumer debt, Sarah? Actually not. The interesting thing is we only actually saw the consumer add balances last year for the first time since the recession, and they were extremely modest. We know that, um, according to our research, that the consumer has less credit cards in their wallet than before, and they actually use it as a cash management tool, and they can really measure what they're spending um, each month. But what are the numbers here? Because you, we could say that sales volume was up, but sales numbers is a different story, because I saw a lot of sales. And I personally took advantage of a lot of sales. Thank you, discounters across the country. So did Morgan. We were talking about that. So well, we got we we spent money, but it was we got it all half off, forty percent off. Well, clearly margins are going to be pressured in certain sectors, not all sectors. One of the most interesting things is for the last forty-four months, we have seen retailers with retail sales of fifty million or less outgrow total retail sales. We are shopping at boutiques small. There's no volume discount that they can give, so therefore we're buying at full price there. So the interesting thing when we actually measure this is you have to look at those who are publicly traded and. In the markets as separate from the actual retail economy. Well, what are we seeing millennials do? Because I feel like for several years we've heard really bad news about millennials not being able to afford houses, not being able to make the big life purchases. How are millennials factoring into this new furniture spending spree? Actually, millennials are over indexing on furniture. So, you know, furniture is over indexing. Been, that means they're <laughs> spending more than, than the total spending growth that we're seeing on furniture. So their growth rate is higher in the double digits on furniture. So finally, I guess we're kicking them out of the house <laughs> well, and they're finally well, it's about time. Yeah. I'm a millennial and I'm uh, on the hunt for a new mattress. My husband and I are so but well, we're looking for all the deals. This is really yeah. true and I think this is the whole level that we're seeing and there was you know, winners and losers over the holiday. The clear winner was finally digital. Finally e-commerce actually hit double digit growth. The question is will it be sustainable because typically we don't see people want to buy this for themselves because of time. They what are, time what are the bricks and mortar companies going to do though? I mean the, the Amazon killed it. We, we found out this number, the most successful ever holiday season for Amazon. No surprise. But if you're a brick and mortar store, Oh, but bricks and mortar are far from dead. Let's be clear. Uh, until we hit the holiday months, total retail sales, if we look at just e-commerce, the share was only 6.7%. It went to 7.7% during the holiday season. So let's keep this all in perspective. We love the social aspect of shopping in the store. So I, I did it all day yesterday at the outlet at the store. Wait, at the Morgan, outlet you went to a store? An yes. actual store? I went to the Ferragamo store and got two pairs of shoes. At the outlet, on sale. On at the sale. Outlet. Thank I think you. my husband's watching. Never mind. I, I, was I didn't feeling, know that. I was feeling that, that my kids spend it, but now I'm listening to you guys. Do you think that this trend continues into next year, and is this positive for retailers as it relates to their underlying stocks? I absolutely think it does. But one of the things that's very different is since the recession, we've seen people move into experiential spending. So we've never seen higher spend in airlines, lodging, restaurants. Restaurants were up double digit on Christmas Day. Nobody cooked, obviously. <laughs> so you sit there and yep. you really see that this experiential. So what the traditional retailer has to do is bring that experience into the store for the consumer to Talk about the Patriots before you leave, though. What did you think of that game last night? Oh, you're really hitting a sore <laughs> spot. But you know what? I got great Patriots stuff for Christmas, so I'm a happy woman. Mm. We, right, we, they are playing well, by the way. Although I had a great the, day yesterday. Yeah, well, the Giants didn't have a great day. Yeah, but, yeah. A lot of upset people in the studio this morning about the New York Giants. Anyway, Sarah Quinlan, thank you very much. Thanks.